Just last year, Bill Gates called Ray Kurzweil, quote, the best at predicting the future of artificial intelligence, close quote. A best-selling author of many books, including his most recent title, The Singularity is Near, When Humans Transcend Biology, Ray Kurzweil is an entrepreneur, engineer, and futurist. He was the principal developer of the first OmniFont optical character recognition system, the first CCD flatbed scanner, and many other important devices. He has founded nine successful companies, including Kurzweil Educational Systems. A graduate of MIT, Kurzweil has received 11 honorary doctorates and has been honored by three U.S. presidents. Forbes magazine called him, quote, the rightful heir to Thomas Edison, close quote. During the EDUCAUSE conference for higher education in Dallas not long ago, Ray Kurzweil sat down with eSchool News editor Greg W. Downey to discuss technology, education, and the future. Thanks so much, Mr. Kurzweil, for agreeing to spend a few minutes with the 600,000 educators who rely on the eSchool News Network. My it's pleasure. an honor indeed to be with you. From an education perspective, what do you think are the most exciting and important trends involving technology right now? Well, networking, social networking, uh, the ability to share information across the globe with people who have similar interests, is very important. The democratization of the creation of knowledge is a very important phenomenon. It used to be if you wanted to create a recorded album, a movie, important piece of software, you had to be a big corporation, a big agency, or get the resources of that. That really did not enable, let's say, kids in the dorm room to do fully creative work. But now with a PC, you can create a full quality motion picture, a recorded album, a couple of kids in their dorm room at Stanford created a little piece of software that's now worth $100 billion that you use to search the internet. Google, so really yeah. the tools of creation are, are democratized. Uh, we're also making educational materials and courseware and courses and lectures available worldwide. And, and I'm on the board of MIT, my alma mater, and we have an open courseware program to provide all MIT courses available for free on the internet. And already you have classes in Pakistan and Nigeria and China where kids gather around a computer with a facilitator and take an MIT course. And uh, not for MIT credit, but for local credit, but they're getting the courseware. This will soon include also the actual streaming lectures uh, in, the, in the lecture halls. And as virtual reality gets more and more compelling and realistic and lifelike, ultimately there won't be a significant difference between being there in the classroom and having all of this information available on the web. So really everyone, ultimately in many different languages, are going to have access to the highest quality of education from you know, pre-kindergarten through postgraduate. Could you expand a little bit on how you see technology changing uh, education and the way educators have to do their job uh, over the next, say, 20 years? Well, I mentioned already this availability of courseware uh, on the web. We also, there's also the phenomenon of computer system instruction, which is getting more sophisticated. And we are learning there's a lot of factual knowledge uh, and also skills like reading that really can be done quite satisfactorily, uh, either augmented by computer system instruction or done altogether that way. Uh, so I, th I think an educator really is going to be a mature guide that can guide you through the world of knowledge, which itself is growing exponentially, doubling in size every year, uh, but not necessarily having to spoon feed uh, one by one every child with that information. There's going to be many online resources to do that. Uh, in education, you might be best known for the Kurzweil 3000, uh, and you work on behalf of individuals with disabilities, uh, especially in reading acquisition. What do you see in the near term for the way assistive technologies will uh, come online? Well, we just introduced a pocket-sized reading machine, uh, which has uh, widespread applicability for both blind and dyslexic uh, reading disabled uh, children and adults. We introduced in July, there's already seven or 800 in the field. Uh, the early market is principally blind guys and gals going around reading material in the real world as they go through the day, not just bring material back to their desk, so reading the labels in the clothing or the menu or bank ATM displays on a wall. Uh, 
but it's actually quite useful for dyslexic uh, students as well because the Kurzweil 3000 is a desk-based system right. and this will enable people to go through the day and reading material uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. And uh, we have research showing that by being exposed to the printed form and auditory form in a synchronized fashion, uh, dyslexic uh, students actually look, improve their reading skills. So th there's a pedagogical effect while they're using it for compensatory reasons. Now, is this device uh, commercially available now, or is it still in the pilot stage? No, this is commercially available. Uh, it's uh, the Kurzweil National Federation of the Blind Reader, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been available since since July. Another important technology is speech recognition, ultimately for the deaf. That, that was one of our original goals, and I believe that will be feasible, so a deaf person can basically get subtitles on the world. Mm -hmm. a little device that basically has a display of what people are saying, Ultimately, that can be built into your eyeglasses mm. and actually read what people are saying. And ultimately, we'll all use them because they can also translate languages, give you real time translation. Well, that was my next question, actually. Uh, we, you talked about uh, technology assisted translation, translating telephones, closed captioned eyeglasses, and so on. Do um, you think we're any closer now to accurate real time translation technology? The ESN TV interview with Ray Kurzweil continues in part two.